We don't have to take a back seat here in this JUCO tournament to the Omaha tournament, the NC2A. My name's Austin Sheely. I'm 6'8", 250 pounds. My name's Hunter Swift, 5'7", 180 pounds. The tallest on the team. The shortest guy on the team. And this is the JUCO full windup, day three. And go Eagles. We started this Memorial Day with Jefferson College and Walter State, both teams trying to advance in the winner's bracket. Third baseman Jacob Jennings hosts our pregame coverage for the Senators. Why were you throwing sunflower seeds at me? I wasn't here. I was a big catcher here. I, I know. I've seen it come out of your hand. How does it feel to just be the best player in the nation behind Tyler Jennings? You know, you know it feels good. Um, it feels very good. Hey, it feels really good. Uh, I heard that you had the best goatee in the nation. How do you feel about that? Oh, no question. No question about it. Uh, he has the best hairdresser on the team, obviously. I mean, look at this head of hair. I, mean, I woke up this morning. I got a nice hour before we were supposed to leave. I got a nice blow dry in. That's that's what really gets the poof going. You got to turn around. Oh. How does it feel to have the lowest ERA in the country? You know, I've worked really hard for it. Uh, could say I'm the best relief pitcher in the country. I believe it. None of my teammates do, but it's what my, my opinion matters. So, And that is your Walter State Senators, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's get to it. Home plate umpire Anthony Prater says play ball, and Austin Henry agrees. With two outs in the first, Henry homers to the batter's eye in dead center, his first dinger of the World Series. Second inning with two outs again, Duncan Pence singles through the left side, and before you can finish rubbing in your sunscreen, Walters is up 6-0. The fourth inning was a wild one. In the top half, Jeffco puts together a rally to score three runs, and they're within arm's reach of the Senators. I just think we started seeing the ball a little bit better, starting to figure out the pitcher's tendencies, and you know that, those are the things that we, you know, we've been really good at all season. In the bottom half, though, Hunter Gilliland rolls over to the left side. Looks to be the end of the inning. Doyle gets a funny hop at short. The throw pulls off Joey Pollock, but the umpire calls the out, which sends Coach Shelton running across the diamond. He pleads for the umpires to meet. On the replay, you can see that Pollock's foot well off the bag, so the umpires correct the call, determine the batter safe, scoring the runner from third and a three-run lead for Walter State. In the sixth, Joey Pollock at the plate, two for two with a homer and a double, and more RBI on the way, but Tyler Gentry, a spectacular catch, and then he doubles up the runner at second. I think I turned a cartwheel coming out of the dugout on it, but uh, uh, to get the, the, the double off right there was just, uh, it was icing on the cake. Ahead to the eighth, the Vikings aren't done scrapping. In the top of the inning, Matt Torino turns in an RBI single, so this game is still very much up for grabs but in the bottom of the frame. With bases loaded, Walters responds to put this one out of reach, which Coach Shelton admits it's hard to even say a lead is out of reach here in Grand Junction. You can't be on too much of a roller coaster. You can't go too high and you can't go too low. You just got to kind of roll with the punches in baseball, and it really holds true out here because six-run lead's nothing, eight-run lead's nothing, ten-run lead's really nothing at times. So uh, I've seen some crazy things happen out here. You get back ready to play tomorrow. You've played 60 plus games. I mean, it's not reinventing the wheel. I mean, this is who we are as a team. Um, you know, heck, we, we've won a lot of games up to this point. Just, hey, go back, get some rest, get something to eat, get ready to go tomorrow. Back to the loser's bracket. After a dramatic win yesterday against Chat Valley, Temple tries to take down the reigning national champs to stay alive. Leopard Ballpark, baby, some please, yo. We in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This game three. Basically defending national champs. That's my boy Jacer. Jay Lid had a big day yesterday. Frank the Tank Kellner. Hey, welcome oh, back, Grand Junction, alive for another day. Hope yes, to sir. See you again tomorrow. Let's go. Rooster. Shoo. Shoo. I love baseball and I love this team, baby. <laughs> Leopard. What is up, Grand Junction? Hey, Woo. hey, it's Drew and Reed. Hey, Drew Shaker. Woo. Shout out to the Leopard fans. Most loyal fans at the tournament. Woo! Scott Dev, he's the man. 
It's, it's for the kids. He's the most cultured. It's for the kids. Yeah. Ooh, Picasso with the paints. Oh my gosh, trainer. Is on the screen? Chipola had a dramatic win on Sunday night as well. After a walk-off home run, they look to keep the momentum going. Hey, watch out for Chipola. We ain't done yet. We don't bounce back. First inning, Temple stabbed themselves in the foot early on. Max Guzman grounds one to third. That starts a rundown with Edmond Americon. Americon scampers back safely, and now the bases are loaded. Next batter, Jared Howell, hits a tailor-made double play, but Breck Potvin bobbles it and can only get the force out at second. Meanwhile, Morgan McCullough never stops running. He scores from second base, and it's now 2 to nothing. Second inning, Chipola has tacked on. It's now 6 nothing, and the hero from last night continues his tear. Howell nearly hits one out to left center, but he'll settle for a triple. Add one more on the board, it's now 7-0. Third inning, Temple storms back. Preston Mosick drops his second bomb of the tournament. That one lands safely in the peach basket in center. It's now 7-2. One run later in the inning, two outs for Devin Tucker. Right back where it came from. Seth Spin scores, and it's suddenly a three-run game. But when you need a big hit, you call on Edmond Americon. This guy is on a mission to be the MVP of the tournament. He tallied another five RBIs in this contest. He's now batting over 600 for the World Series and has eight RBIs in just three games. And Edmond's bat is becoming contagious for other teammates like Morgan McCullough. It really starts with Edmond. Whenever Edmond gets on, we feel like we got the ball rolling. And he did that four times today. So, uh, I mean, it's a lot easier when you got runners on base. And just make it, Edmond makes him work, Fran makes him work, and then I guess he's just tired by the time I get up there. Joey Orsak put one more notch on the board for Temple before this one was over. Solo home run to center in the fifth inning, but that's as far as this game goes. Chipola mercy rules Temple 17-5 in five innings. The Leopards weren't expected to be in the World Series, but they walk out with their heads high. Our conference is really tough. We've got a lot of good teams in our conference. We face good teams, but this is a little bit of a bigger step up for them. So for the freshmen, again, if they can figure out, hey, I've got to step it up and change some things or get better at what I do to give, give us a chance to get back here sometime, possibly next year, then hopefully that's something they can, they can take away from this experience. So one thing that stands out right off the bat is, is no walks. And uh, you know, that's been a kind of thing that haunted us the first couple of games. And, and Jack went in and did well for us through strikes. And you know, he's had a propensity in the third inning to be a tough inning for him this year. And, uh, but we got through that, and thank goodness offensively, we swung the bat well. I thought we finally got back to who we were. Third and final matchup of the day, it's the Reavers of Iowa Western versus the Eagles of Southern Idaho. Coach Mark Raritan for the Reavers, rocking what his players call the Joe Matted Glasses. In the CSI dugout, it's pitcher Jake Nelson with the mic. I would say I'm not nervous, but I'm very nervous, but I'm excited too. Is there any possible way you could see your hairline? Um, we'll save that for a later day, just kidding. Everyone's going to be proud of this. <laughs> that is money right there. Could I get an interview from you today? No comment today? You don't want a couple questions? Nothing? <laughs> Tough crowd tonight. All right. Thank you. My preparation was to uh, play a lot of MLB tap sports baseball, really get my mind right, you know, in case I get a, in case I get an A-B today. Any prediction for the game tonight? That we're going to win. You got a score for us or not? We're just going to win. We're just going to win. All right. That does it here. Go Eagles. Head coach Boomer Walker was here in Grand Junction as Bat Boy when his dad was the coach for CSI. This one is a little more special because I get to look down on the field and I get to see my son and I get to see his players and I get to see them try the same thing that we wanted to try to do also. Mason Foltz had the game of his life against a potent Reavers lineup, kept them off balance and hitless for the first three and two thirds, switching up arm angles and ranging from 66 to 88 on the gun. His bats begin to back him up in the second with two outs, Brett Resch, the eight hole hitter, sets home Hayden Latham after Latham reached on an infield single. Next inning, chopper to third, throw is low, Ryan Sullivan can't make the pick, and after a hit batter and a single, David Huddleston trots home on the free pass given here by Indigo Diaz. Now to the fourth. Another missed grounder leads to a run as Huddleston brings home Jordan Sedovia and Southern Idaho has a 4-0 lead. With their first runner in scoring position, Iowa Western doesn't cash in. Foltz forces a fly ball to center to end the inning. 
He goes eight and a third strong with 11 Ks in 122 pitches. Things got a little dicey in the ninth with the rain falling and the bases loaded. Tanner Holen pops this one into short right, charging in his rest. And as he tries to pull up, his feet slip out. Somehow, though, he manages to still make the grab. And Iowa Western scores on the sacrifice. Mason Spears comes in to pinch hit, makes solid contact, but Colin Gordon secures the 27th and final out. Southern Idaho is your victor behind a career night for Mason Fultz. I've played in a couple of big games. Legion ball, we went to regionals. It was kind of high stakes, but nothing like <coughs> this, this venue and this many people and these quality of teams. So it feels good to uh, come out and give my team a chance to win. I'm truth in reality. Uh, you know, if we win this, that's awesome. You got a day off. If you don't, it's the bearer of bad news where you got to turn back around and play. Uh, I think it's a three, right? It's, it's a one game season. I faced Mason in high school, and he's always been like this. <laughs> he's just a dude. Mace and uh, and a couple other guys went fishing today with uh, with our host family, and kind of had, you know, maybe that was the deal. Maybe we all need to go fishing. <laughs> Let's check out the home run and play of the day. Starting with the play, let's hear from Jack Dellinger on what he had to say about this liner back at him. Well, I mean, it took off my glove, so I mean, I don't really know. Just instincts, and before I knew it, I was on the ground. Yeah, no, I threw it over and I was sitting there, I look at Fran, and Fran just got the ear-to-ear -ear grin on his face and, you know, he just chuckled. Home run of the day, something we've never seen before here on the full windup. Hunter Masick deposits this ball into the peach basket. Temple was sent home, but that's a story that will live on forever. So here's your updated bracket. There are now just three teams in the winner's side. Walter State and San Jacinto will play on Tuesday night, and Southern Idaho gets a day off and will play Wednesday night. In the loser's bracket, Iowa Western turns around after this Monday night game and will play a hot Chipola team at 3 p.m. Monroe will try to bounce back after a tough loss in their opener. They will play Jefferson to start off Tuesday's action. Two more teams will go home. You can follow everything here on our JUCO World Series social media and catch all the action on the JUCO Full Windup, brought to you by Pepsi.